Welcome to five tools you should make with your CNC. This is not going to be a complete list. In the comments below, go ahead and put down anything you've made, something you've thought of, whatever you need. Let's continue the conversation and add to the list. You own the means of production. That's one of the great things about having a CNC. So let's give you five areas to explore and have success with your machine. Number one, rulers and measuring devices of all sorts. You can make any shape, you can make any unit of measure, exploit that. My first thought was creating 90 degree angles because often you're looking for a 90 degree, either to measure or gauge something. This was version number one. It had some sharp edges to it, it was okay. It had a reasonable size hole here for getting the actual corner of the object you're trying to measure right into the corner. Here is number two. It has three filleted edges around the sides which made it a little bit friendlier. A little bigger hole in the middle, I think actually that's too big. And I did a little chamfer along the top edge on the outside to refine that. This turned out pretty nice, was really happy with this. So I took it a little further. I went on to create a straight up ruler. This thing has the ability to put a half inch piece of wood down the middle, a let's say a smaller piece that you wanted to measure. You can abut it to the top and you can go ahead and figure out how long it is. You can put marks on it. I don't know if this is something you want to use. If it's not, make the thing that you want to use. I immediately want to put a T on top of here so that I can go ahead and jam it up against the edge of whatever it is I'm trying to measure. I think that would be a nice improvement on this. Hey, a quick note here about learning and progression. Remember when we did the golf club project, we used these G-Paint enamels to fill in portions of that golf club. These again came in handy as soon as I cut increments on each one of these tools. Yeah, these were begging for a little enamel. It really kicked them up a notch. And now it's starting to look like a certain mm, bird-themed tool maker. Yeah, you can make fancy stuff too. When it comes to what to make these tools out of, start at MDF, go all the way to aluminum, Anything in between is just fine. It's gonna be up to whatever use you have for them, what materials you have around, what materials you're capable of cutting. It's entirely up to you. Next, I made some fillet gauges. What are fillet gauges? Well, they measure the either inner or outer fillet on a pre-existing object. These are particularly useful when it comes to mimicking an object. If you're gonna reskin something, or if you wanna know and match a piece that's gonna be on top of a piece and you wanna match the exact fillet, you wanna go ahead and measure it. I initially made some out of aluminum, then I went back and made some out of HDPE. These may not last too long, but they're friendly and fun to use to start. You can make them out of almost anything you want. They can be any shape you want. Again, that's the point. Number two is guides and templates. And here we're talking about stuff you might put on your CNC bed or you're gonna come back and use a standard handheld router with. John Perilla of Perilla Works is a real guy making router jigs on the Shapeoko Pro. John is developing these for sale both in plan form as well as physical form. He's gone through a variety of different iterations and he is actually using a lot of the techniques we're talking about here in terms of tool production. If you're creating several of the same objects on a regular basis, go ahead and automate what you're doing. Guides and templates, make them, use them, sell them. It's all up to you. Number three, sanding blocks. Here's an old school type project for you. If you go back in the archives of Wood Magazine or Popular Mechanics or one of these, you will find a ton of different sanding blocks. The size is up to you, the customization is up to you. Go ahead and make it exactly a fit for your hand, whatever shape you want, out of whatever materials you want. This is, again is an opportunity for you to customize a tool to your exact needs. I made a couple of different varieties here. This one is just simply a press fit circle within a circle and the base is put on with some spray adhesive. This will tear off, you can put a new one on. I could see having a whole stable of these in different grits just sitting above your workbench. Can you buy sanding blocks and then buy the specialty size paper? Yes you can, you don't have to, you're a CNC owner. The hilarious thing is I found myself immediately using these sanding blocks. Sanding blocks are an area where you can go mallet crazy. I made this one out of plywood, the very first version, and then I went ahead and made this out of actual real wood, a little poplar in this one. Maybe you want to go to a hardwood next and have a whole bunch of really fancy sanding blocks in your shop. Yeah, that'll impress your woodworking friends. Number four, workbench helpers. I'm talking about bench dogs, spacers, standoffs, all kinds of stuff that's available for workbenches and desks. This is an area where you could sell stuff or you can just improve your own quality of life. 
Look to the marketplace. What's popping up? What are people using? What do you need? What do you think about when you're at your desk or in your workspace? This works quite nicely with number two. Go ahead and put units of measure and different shapes on your workbench helpers. Getting the cheapest tools off Amazon is not the point of this exercise. If that's your comment that I can buy this on Amazon for $10, yeah, I know, you can buy anything you wanna buy. With enough money, you could do whatever. The point here is to make custom, unique things that you're proud of. You can't buy pride. That's what you're gonna get from making these tools. On to number five, a circle center finder. It's weird, it's specific, it's exactly what makes owning a CNC incredible. This is a handy tool to have around because you might be in a situation, especially a non-CNC situation, where you want to find the center of a pre-made circular object. Maybe it's a bunch of coasters somebody brought you. Maybe you're working with some coin blanks or some round stock and you've cut a piece off, you need to find the middle of it. This is where this guy comes in handy. The triangle inside is perfectly aligned with one edge of the stick, which you could put measurements down, and that will allow you to butt it up against the edge of a circle, draw a line, go ahead and change the angle to any angle you wish, draw that same line, that will give you the center. You can put a third one in to check it exactly, and you'll find yourself with the exact center of that circular object. This is for a small one, it's made out of aluminum. I made a bigger one out of MDF. It works quite well on a paint can. Two different materials, two different sizes, a weirdo tool that you can now make. I'm sure while watching this, you thought of things you can make. That's exactly the idea. We want you to be inspired to go further. Make things for yourself, make things for sale. We want you to get wins with your machine. And we'll be back here in the studio with more information, ideas, and inspiration.